Hi guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to show you how you can build your programming skills by building simple and small projects. So in this video we will build one together and then also make sure to watch until the end because there will be some examples for you to practice. So here is a quick demo of the application that we are going to build. So here is the application that we want to build. It has date, time and then here we will put in a message and when we click set reminder it is going to remind us when that time comes so let's say that i want a reminder message at 1503 and let's say that i want to tell wake up and click set reminder and now we wait until 1503 okay Bye. So here is our message and now I'm going to show you how to build this app. But before we start, I have a surprise. Are you ready to take your programming skills to the next level? Because my programming course is coming soon and it's unlike anything you've ever seen before. We are going to dive deep into programming and I will teach you about all of the concepts but not on individual small examples. I will teach you how all of the programming concepts work together and how they coexist to make big complex real world applications. So this is going to be beginner to advanced programming course and all of the things that you can already see on my YouTube channel are maybe 3% of this programming course and the remaining 97% are the things that you cannot find anywhere else on the internet. So for those of you who watch my YouTube videos, I want to give you a special discount, so make sure to click the link in the description to secure your place because I have already published this news in my last video and a lot of people have already signed up and unfortunately the number of people that can get a discount is limited, so if you want one, make sure to sign up now. So let's go back to our project and see how we are going to build this application. So to build this application, I will use C++ Builder because it is the easiest and fastest way to build multi-platform applications with C++. So if you don't already have it, I will put a link in the description so that you can download it and code along with me. You could already see how our application is going to look like. So let's start building it and let's start building user interface first. So here in this palette, I will drag and drop all of the controls that we need. First of all, we need date control, so it's called T date edit. I'll drag and drop it. And then we need also time edit. It's called T time edit. Drag and drop that as well. Okay. And then we need T edit, which is just a regular input field text box where you can write your message. And we need button. Okay. And another control that we need is called T timer. And if you don't see it here, make sure to delete this and then click on this arrow which says show palette categories and select system. And here under system, you should be able to see T timer. So drag and drop that as well. So here are all of the controls that we will need. Now I will just resize them a little bit and position them and then I will be back. So here are all of the controls. I've just repositioned them a little bit. And also don't forget to change the names of all of these controls because we want to access them from our C++ code and we will do that by using their names. So this control here is called reminder date. And then this one here is called reminder time and then reminder message and our button is called set reminder button and I've also changed the text for our button. It now says set reminder. Okay. And this timer here also change its name and call it reminder timer like this. So now what we need to do is implement the functionality for this set reminder button. So I will double click on it. And as you can see here, we have handler and inside this handler we are going to describe what is going to happen when our user enters the date and time and reminder message and clicks set reminder. So how are we going to implement this functionality? First we need to get the values that our user has entered for date and time and then we will find the difference between that 
reminder date and time and the current time in order to get the remaining time until that message should be shown. And we will use that remaining time as an interval for our timer. So our timer will be set and it will count that remaining time and then it will show the message. So let's start building that step by step. So first I want to get the values that the user has entered. So I will say t date and I will call that variable reminder date. Okay, and inside reminder date, which is of type t date, I will store the value from this field here. I need its name. Its name is reminder date. So I will copy that and go back here. And here I will say reminder date and I will take date value from it. Okay. This is how we get date. Now let's get time as well. So I will say t time and I will call it reminder time is equal to, and I believe that this is called reminder time. I'm correct. Okay, so let's go back and let's say reminder time. And then from this, I want to take time like this. Okay, now I want to join these two variables into one. So there is a type called t date time, like this, and I will call this variable reminder date time. Okay, reminder date, oh my god, date time is equal to, and there is a very easy way to join these two values, you just say reminder date plus reminder time. Okay, let's do a little bit of formatting here. Okay, so inside this variable, now we have our reminder date and time. The next step that I want to do is I want to find the difference between this reminder date time that our user has set and the current time. And to determine current time, there is a function called now. So we will use that. And this is how we are going to use it. I will say t date time and call it remaining time. Okay. And I will say that remaining time is equal to reminder date time minus now. Okay. So this remaining time variable is going to store the difference between that reminder date time that our user wants his message to be shown at and the current time. Okay. And we will store that value here. So now we can set this difference as a timer and it is going to count, count, count. And when it comes to that time, it will show the reminder message. But one important thing that we need to do before that is we need to convert this into milliseconds because this here is in date time format and our timer receives only milliseconds. So how are we going to do that? Let me very quickly find something and then I'll be back. So this is what I've been looking for. It's the number of milliseconds per day. It's 86,400,000. Okay. Why do I need this? Because the timer that we want to set receives only milliseconds. So now, we need to convert this remaining time into milliseconds. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's first create a variable of type double and let's call it remaining time in milliseconds. Let's say remaining time in milliseconds like this. Okay, so how are we going to convert this into milliseconds? It's very simple. Oh my God, it is very simple. Check this out. So I will multiply this remaining time with milliseconds per day, but I first need to cast this to double because currently this is in date time format. So I will use static cast and I will cast it to double type. What I'm going to cast this. So I need to put this into parentheses and I will multiply it by milliseconds per day like this. Okay. And let's just move this into a new line like this. So how does this work? Well, very simple. If this remaining time is an entire day when it is in date time format, 
When you cast it to double, then it will have the value of 1, 1 1.0. So when you multiply 1.0 with this many milliseconds per day, you will get exactly this many milliseconds, which is one entire day. So in this many milliseconds, your reminder message will be shown. And then if this is, for example, half a day when it is in date time format, then when you convert it to double, it is going to be 0 0.5. So when you multiply 0 0.5 by this many milliseconds, you will get half of this. So you will get 43 million and 200,000, which means that in that many milliseconds, your reminder message will be shown and that many milliseconds is half a day. So that is how this part here works. And now what we can do is we can use this value here and set it as the interval for our timer. So here I will say reminder timer and I will set its interval. Please make sure to use this arrow because we are working with pointers here and this is a pointer. So here I will say interval and its value is going to be this value here like this. And the only remaining thing to do is to say that this reminder timer is now enabled. So reminder timer enabled is equal to true like this. So with this, we have successfully set our timer. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to define the behavior of our application when this time is reached. So go to design file or your form.fmx and here you need to double click on your timer. Okay, and you will get this function here and inside it, we will define two things. First, as soon as this timer is reached, we want to disable it. And second thing is we want to show that message to our user. So let's go very quickly to our design file once more, just to check the name of this timer. It's called a reminder timer. And I will go back to my CPP code. And here I will say reminder timer enabled it's capital letter E enabled is equal to false. So this means that from this point on our reminder timer will be disabled. And the second thing was to show the message. So I will say show message. There's already a function for that. And inside here, I want to show whatever our user has typed into this edit field. And the name of this edit field is reminder message. So go back to CPP and here I will show reminder message text like this and make sure that it's capital letter T. Okay, so that is the last thing. And one more thing before we run this application is we actually want to start our application with this timer in disabled mode. So inside your constructor of the form, you need to say that this timer will be disabled when the application starts because you want to control yourself when the timer should be enabled and that is here. Okay, so now if I run this application, let's see what's going to happen. So here we need to select the date. It's today's date, so I don't want to change that. I just want to change the time. So let's say 14.57 and let's say wake up. And here I will say set reminder. And now we wait. Okay. And as you can see, here is our message. Now, one important thing that you should keep in mind is that this message can be a few seconds early or a few seconds late, and that can be due to two things. First one is that this code does need some time to execute. And then second reason is that your system time does not necessarily need to be in sync with this time in perfect sync. So if your notification is late or early, that is potential reason. So at the beginning of this video, I promised to give you a couple of ideas on how you can practice programming on your own. So now I'm going to do that. This entire project was inspired by one of my reels, this one. 
So you guys asked me to help you implement some of these projects. So I decided to do that right now. And if you want to get more ideas and if you want to get more tips or best practices and things like that, make sure to follow me on Instagram because I am a lot more active there because it's much faster to create content for Instagram. So definitely add me there so that we can stay in touch between my YouTube videos. The link for my Instagram profile will be in the description. So thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you can leave those in the comment section. And if you want more videos like this one, give this video a big thumbs up. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in some other video. Bye.